Today, we learn about PowerPoint for genealogy. I'm your trainer, Lori Coffey, and I live in PowerPoint. Well, here we are. What PowerPoint was created for? <laughs> How to create a presentation. Will you be presenting your genealogy adventure at a family reunion or a genealogy society meeting or at a local lunchtime meeting where you often have no control over the size of the screen? What do you think is the first secret to making a successful presentation? Make it big, <laughs> make it big, both the image and the text, because you don't know how big the room is. To make it big, you also need to keep it simple, sweetheart. Visualize this screen. Can the people in the back see it? Fill the screen with the image. This is where design ideas can really help. It's on the home tab, but the pane will automatically open when it thinks it can help. For example, you grab this screenshot of the Plymouth Rock for your presentation, and Design Ideas offers you ways to make it bigger. Just click the one you like. It's a nice big rock. You also wanna make the text big. KISS is huge. In fact, it's 115 points and one point equals 1 72nd of an inch. Remember consistency with creating a book. The same goes here. A rule of thumb is no more than two fonts per presentation, one for the headline and one for the body text, plus maybe one more for specialty purposes like KISS. What do we avoid at all costs? Bullet points. So if you need to share a list, follow the six six rule of thumb. Keep it to no more than six lines and no more than six words per line like this. Keep the pictures big, keep the text big, keep the fonts to two plus, keep lists short, keep bullet points out of your show. That one is six words, the limit. Notice I didn't show you the whole list at once. That's through animations. We can choose to animate each text box to appear on a click or automatically after the previous item or both in sequence. I use a remote clicker, but you can use your mouse or keyboard. PowerPoint knows you might be a little nervous when presenting and might forget how to advance the slides in slideshow view. Hit F1 to see shortcuts, like on the keyboard, you can hit N, space, right arrow, down arrow, enter, or page down to advance the slides, or use your clicker. On the mouse, just left click. You can also see the options for going back to the previous animation. So you can go forward or backward. First and foremost, use animation to enhance, not overpower the image or the message. Okay. Here's how to animate. First, click the object to animate. Then in the animations tab, select the animation to use. Then choose how it should appear. Unclick with or after previous. It's very complex. Turn on the animation pane so you can keep track of it all. At the top of the pane, click the play button to make the animations run so you can see how they will play in order but it doesn't pause for your click like it will when you're presenting. In the ribbon, I changed two of the animations to start after previous, so I only have to click twice while presenting. You can also make changes on the animation pane. I try to click less. Did I mention that I live in PowerPoint? <laughs> I know every animation available. Entrance effects that bring in your object, emphasis effects that show after it's on the screen, and exit to make it leave the screen. There's also motion paths to move it around the screen. But I also know when to use them and when not to use them, right? And that's most of the time. Just like with designing a book, keep it simple, sweetheart. Use animation can be very complex for you and annoying for your audience, so start small. Use it with purpose and be consistent by only using one or two understated types like fade. Let's fade in, fade out. And remember to save early and save often so you don't have to recreate it. Here's a tip for when your big presentation like this one is slow to open or save. Look at file info for ways to optimize and compress media to cut the bloat. Usually I can't send a PowerPoint like this in an email, but when I use the compress options, I can. You just have to make sure that the quality is still good. When it's time to practice your animations as the audience will see them, use the slideshow button at the bottom of the screen. 
This will put you in slideshow view from the slide you are currently on, so you can see your animation with clicks. Then hit the escape button to go back to normal view. That's an important concept. You have an entire tab of tools to help you present in your slideshow. For example, rehearse with the coach. My sister just discovered this one and she's thrilled. It's, it's new, but it's really cool. Here's a tip for those with the latest version of PowerPoint. This new tool lets you rehearse while PowerPoint keeps track of your speech and word usage. It listens while you give your presentation. When you hit escape to stop, your rehearsal report appears with useful feedback. Let's see, when your presentation is finished and you're done practicing at your desk and in front of the mirror, it's time for a dress rehearsal. That means with the type of equipment you will be using on site, like a projector or monitor. You cannot fully rehearse without it. You might even be able to use your TV if the connections are right. First, know your laptop. Will you need a VGA connector or an HDMI or something else like an Apple dongle? To rehearse at home, you may need to buy a cable. I bought a 16-foot HDMI cable, which I take with me and have needed a few times <laughs> and shared. <laughs> you might even need to BYO extension cord. I think it's a good idea to keep both of those in your computer bag. Next, review your computer settings for projecting. Microsoft makes it super easy to find. Just hit the Windows key with P for project. Yours could look like this or this. Either way, you determine how you want to see it. You will likely only need duplicate or extend. Use duplicate if you want to see on your laptop only what the audience sees. If you're not going to be using the tools or notes or the clock or the preview of what's coming, just use duplicate. But if you want to see your own backstage view with all those tools, use extend. This is powerful stuff. What I'm seeing here is different from what you're seeing. I see a little image of what you're seeing, but I see a lot more. Called presenter view, you can see your notes and timing, tools, and what slide is next, plus the one that they can see. You could resize these areas for what makes sense to you. You can also make your notes bigger. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> When I rehearse, I keep track of my timing since I almost always have to stay on schedule when speaking. To help do that, at section breaks in my presentation, in the notes, I post time goals of when I have to be done with this slide. Right now, I'm two minutes behind schedule, so keep moving. <laughs> During rehearsal, you may have to go to slideshow tab, set up slideshow to make adjustments if you're having issues with multiple monitors. You generally only have to do this once. After all that rehearsing, it's time to present to a live in-person audience. We have connected our laptop to the projector or monitor. We have chosen the project mode we want. We have opened PowerPoint to our presentation's first slide. Now hit F5. That puts you into slideshow view on slide one. This is a huge tip if you're using Zoom from home with a second monitor. Open PowerPoint to your presentation, but don't go into slideshow view yet. When it's time for you to share, in Zoom, click share screen, then choose screen two. Then in PowerPoint, hit F5. Share Zoom first, then PowerPoint. So it's the backward alphabet. <laughs> Zoom first, then PowerPoint. Otherwise, you could delay the meeting. Before we save the presentation, you might want to add some transitions between the slides. Transitions affect how a slide enters, not exits. But KISS, keep it to two styles. One style between sections, maybe one style between special slides like tip, but not on every slide. They will add time to the presentation and can be annoying, so use them with purpose like my tip one. <laughs> a final thought on presentations before we learn to turn it into a video. Immediately after every time you present, improve your presentation by adding a better image to explain a point, creating animation to help build the drama, and adding notes to remember the exact words of your point or punchline and never tell them you're about to tell them a joke. 
<laughs> the expectation will be up here. <laughs> so don't do that. Keep making it better and word will spread. You will be invited by more and more people to share your family story. When it's polished to the point where you are ready for the world to see it, it's time to create a video. To record the presentation, choose from three options. On the new record tab, on the slideshow tab, and the record button at the top of the ribbon. Either way, you can record audio and or video narrations, animations on the slide, transitions between the slide, plus ink and laser pointer. If you wanna draw attention to something on the screen, use PowerPoint's internal laser pointer. When you're in slideshow view, use control with your mouse click and drag where you want the laser to go. The record tab is new and your options are more obvious. I love it. Choose either record from beginning or just from the current slide if you need to re-record a section. Either button opens to the record screen with its own tools. Before you hit the record button, decide if you want to record your video image, uh, no, <laughs> and or audio. Turn either on or off by clicking its icon. Each slide that you narrate will have a separate audio file on it that will play in animation sequence. Click the icon to review it and see two new tabs open, including playback to change how it plays. It's very cool. Of course, you can edit it. Also, right-click for more options like save media as an audio file. Do you see why I call PowerPoint powerful? It's amazing. When you're done verifying audio, video, and animations are working as expected, either save it as a show, which we showed you earlier, if you remember, that anyone can open it without PowerPoint and they control the animations and transitions with clicks. Or if you record with timings, you can export to video, which once started will play automatically to the end. You get a success message when it's done.